I went ahead and clicked on rendering. The HTML template was already applied. Um, and now we get this nice little uh, dialog box that says cleanup complete. And if we look through, we now see that everything that is italic is colored in green and actually italic. We see bold again here. Uh, but it goes through this entire 300 word um, document. Here you won't actually see because this is a work of fiction that we've just used as a um, to test, but you can see right there in the beginning how the rendering works. Um, so again, the SAI is you, like we encourage the use of the SAI when you're composing for the reason that it makes things a lot easier and it actually reduces um, human error because as I said earlier, um, going through this entire document line by line is not something that is that anybody would actually um, you know want to do nor um, is it suggested as it would introduce error so here we'll see that there are other options um, in composition cleanup um, it takes underline which often um, doesn't mean what we think it means. Oftentimes what um, underline is used for emphasis and italic is really what is used for emphasis. So this will actually go through and take anything that is underlined and compose it as italic. This will clean up any note markers, uh, common note issues uh, where spaces are, um, especially words embedded notes, spaces are actually styled as part of the note even though they aren't not uh, part of the note marker. Um, and here uh, we have the option to again load the associate styles dialog box which I showed um, earlier. Uh, Word often when it's working with um, lists um, and certain fields, um, it will, those items, the list leaders are not actually there. They're just, they're just work um, they're just added there by word so that they can be transformed. So if you take a list and you then edit it, you'll notice that oftentimes uh, the numbering will be off or, um, you know, or the numbering will disappear if you apply a certain paragraph style to it. If, if it's no longer a um, list paragraph style, which word recognizes. So what this uh, section here, allow, it allows you to convert those throughout the entire document into actual live text. So if you have a list that says one, two, three, four, um, that one, two, three, and four, if it was created by word, isn't actually there. Um, and so with this, you'll actually be able to preserve your list leaders, your one, your two, your three, and your four throughout. And the same goes for fields often created uh, when using um, um, using either the TOC feature in Word um, or other features that use um, fields. Um, so here, continuing on, going over this cleanup um, option here, um, we see uh, punctuation and character cleanup. And what this does is it'll do certain uh, searches and replaces throughout your document so that you don't have to do this manually or through Word's uh, search and replace. Uh, feature. So for example, it'll take periods of uh, those three sp uh, space periods and turn it into the ellipsis character if that's what's needed for your document. And we also have, actually have the reverse. Um, if um, you have, you know, ellipsis characters and you need space periods for whatever the reason might be, you have that option as well. And we have an option to turn like three periods close together uh, into space periods uh, so that you can mark the ellipsis in that way. Let ligatures will actually clean those up uh, for you. So if you have like FI, it'll actually split into F and I rather than leaving it as one character. Uh, that's often important for, um, you know, to make sure that your uh, document um, when you're going through uh, through the rest of the uh, your workflow, um, you don't have these special characters in there that um, will uh, reduce actually readability and whatnot. Um, so um, single quotation marks, we'll turn those into uh, words, actual curly quotes rather than um, rather than um, words, straight quotation marks, which are two different characters and often do not mean the same thing. Uh, same thing goes for double quotation marks and dashes we'll go through um, and we'll um, add end dashes between numbers um, when uh, oftentimes hyphens are used, which is incorrect um, editorially um, or um, it will combine two uh, hyphens, which people often use um, to indicate an M dash, E-M dash. Um, it will go through and make that um, into an actual M dash, which would be correct editorial. Space and break cleanup will actually go through and just take 
um, you know, unnecessary spaces, paragraph breaks, tabs, um, line, column, page, and section breaks. Those are the ones listed here. You can actually hit this all breaks button uh, and will it will actually select all the section, page, column, and line breaks. Um, and it will clear them from your document. Um, the thing, the reason why is because once um, everything is composed, spacing will be handled by the paragraph styles. Again, another concept that we'll talk about uh, when we are um, talking about composition specifically. Um, here we have um, options to mark for editing. Um, as I said before, you can go through these. These will All they will do is they will add a comment to certain things that the SAI will flag and say, maybe look at this paragraph because it's missing, um, you know, a, the closing quotation mark um, and there's an opening one in here without it um, or if there's potentially hidden uh, text and here um, under the punctuation um, head here you have the option uh, to make the punctuation after um, you know bold italic or bold italic text into not italic or bold italic um, or vice versa if you do want to keep that as part of, of um, your style um, under file selection, you can actually have this run by default. This runs on the main text, the footnotes, and the endnotes. But you can actually have anything that you select here under settings. You can have that run on the queries, uh, on the main text alone if you would like and just would like to leave the footnotes alone, alone or on endnotes alone, so on and so forth. And you can actually run this across selected files, so you don't have to do this if you have a manuscript that is split up um, in, by you know chapter um, you know uh, from several different authors um, you don't have to like just run this on one and then run this whole process again you can actually run this process across uh, selected files find and replace actually takes um, the find and replace from uh, word and makes it a little bit more robust, right? So you can um, use wildcards, which we'll discuss during composition, what they are. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with them. And this search, uh, find and replace, um, like I said, we'll talk about wildcards um, when we uh, discuss composition itself. Um, but at this point, we'll go through. Um, the find and, uh, and replace will allow you to, uh, for example, if you want to change every instance of the word cat, the word dog, right, with one G, right, you're able to go through and do that across the entire uh, document. And you're actually able to use um, wildcards and other options here, um, which are more robust than what Word allows you to do uh, naturally. Like for example, if you want to change something that is Times New Roman, uh, allow me to do that here quickly. Um, let's see, just say, say text here. So like Times New Roman. Um, it won't actually show it to you here. I'm not sure why it's not coming up, but um, it will allow you to take any text that's uh, Times New Roman and change it to another font if necessary. But again, we're not worried about fonts. What this is especially useful for is searching for one style that you want to change to another. And you can actually run multiple uh, instances of, um, of different searches in a specific order. So um, it essentially makes composition a whole lot easier uh, to do. And again, we'll go more in depth into this um, option once we are actually talking about composition. Uh, file checks are, uh, as Tim talked about earlier, uh, the it allows you to go through and check this document to make sure that when it's ingested into the hub, you won't have any errors. So it's a way to error check before you actually upload uh, to the hub and convert to another uh, file format. I'm not going to run that now because it takes uh, quite a bit. Um, not too long, but as I said, I don't want to take up too much time having you guys stare at my screen while it does stuff. Um, Convert notes, what that allows us to do is it allows us to take either words, um, words embedded notes and turn them into plain text notes, usually at the end of the file so that we can edit them, move things around if we need to without having to worry about words, uh, finicky end note uh, feature, or we can actually take plain um, notes that are already uh, composed and at the end of the document and actually embed them um, throughout the entire uh, document here. Um, and this works on uh, both EndNotes and 
footnotes. Um, and that covers pretty much the composition section of the SAI, which is this file management styles and tools section. Uh, sort of just creates a template for it. Um, if we go ahead and click on that and we bring up the little dialog box. And here you can have like your project name, the title of your book, um, the author or authors, editors or, um, or single editor, the style guide that you're using, be it APA, CMS, um, and so on, the dictionary, be it Webster or anything. Um, and the option, uh, continuing further down right after dictionary, to populate the style sheet with specialized terms. So what the SAI will do, it'll go through and look for um, italicized terms, oddly capitalized terms, uh, things that um, you will likely you know, include in a style sheet because it needs a special treatment um, in that case. Um, and just uh, in case um, that term style sheet, uh, that is in the glossary, um, but just for the purposes of the training style sheet is just a document that essentially states all the rules for that particular manuscript so that it gets transmitted along with the manuscript. So for example, if an author likes to hyphenate certain words um, and you know, you guys as an organization have decided to allow the author to hyphenate it in that way for you know some pedagogical purpose then that is in the style sheet and later on down the line nobody flags that as an error or fixes it unknowingly and then you know you end up having to do revisions. So this um, part of the SAI allows you to create that style sheet. Um, and by populating the style sheet with specialized terms, it will actually just fill it in and then uh, the editor would go through and check um, what the SAI filled in because the SAI may just pick a random word because it's capitalized in a strange word and in a strange way and you'll have to then just go in you know and say okay no actually that was a misspelled word it doesn't need to be in the style sheet I fix this and then you remove it so there's still that human component but this at least allows you to go through a list of words rather than picking the words out as you're going um, along. And so you have different options when you're populating uh, the style sheet. Uh, so you can include, as I said, italic terms, bold terms, or any other SCML character styles. For example, um, and this might be um, something we'll discuss later, uh, but there, in the SCML list, there are styles um, that are custom styles, that they're not specifically defined, and we have those there on purpose for flexibility reasons, right? And maybe every, after you composed your document, every, you know, character, uh, custom character style, C cust is what we call it, um, is, you know, a special term that needs to be included in the style sheet. You can actually put that in here. You'd click here and then just write in, you know, C cust one. Right, and then the SAI will know to pull off, pull out every CCUST1 uh, styled word and include it in the style sheet for you. Um, there's also the option to load an existing style sheet if you already have one. Um, we do suggest creating a new one per document using the SAI because there are specific bookmarks and whatnot that the um, that the SAI uh, includes, so that it, you then have the excuse me, you then have the option um, to include words in an easy way, which I'm about to show you now. So let's go ahead and, and create a new one and just call this one OTM test, right? And we'll just say test here. You can leave these blank, they're not required fields, so we'll leave these blank for now. Um, and then just go ahead and hit okay. And what the SAI does, it creates a separate Word document and it formats it this way. For you, it even gives you this nice little um, warning uh, or note uh, that says, you know, uh, copy editing policy is whatever it might be. And this you can all change. You can after it's created, you can remove this if you like. Um, but you'll see that here you have spaces for um, certain rules. So um, you know, general rules like this author likes to capitalize the word it for some reason. So then you just include that in there, and then that way. Um, you keep that um, within the document. Um, you have lists for capitalization, lists, um, you know, how to treat tables and figures, dates and numbers, and so on and so forth. And then down here at the bottom, you have a alphabetical list, right, that allows you to uh, just populate that, like if, you know, let's use the word cat again, like the word cat is spelled in a certain way. Um, some, old English way or something, right? At that point, um, you would just include that under C and then that way when the document is transmitted, um, you'll know that that's not misspelling, that's how you know the author would like to treat it. But again, um, like I said, editorial is very subjective. If you don't choose to 
do this. You know, that is perfectly fine. Um, this is just, we find this uh, to be a good way to reduce errors and a good way to reduce back and forth, especially uh, between the authors. And as we'll see when we talk about um, author documentation. Health sheets, um, in this instance, um, they're per um, document or per manuscript. But um, we do encourage you to have your like house style sheet and then you can just include those um, general rules here in the general tab and throughout as needed. So the, you could populate specific style sheets with the house styles. But um, as of now, um, unless you do this manually, there's no way to sort of just combine um, and like things into like a super style sheet. Um, but we do suggest that if you have your house styles, then you can just plop them in here. Like for example, if you have certain rules about capitalization, you can put those in there and then that travels with the specific document. Um, and we do suggest that you create um, style sheets for each manuscript because each manuscript um, often has like tiny little changes or differences. Not big variations from the house styles, but variations um, between one manuscript and another. Um, yes, there is actually um, a place here where normally under notes and bibliography will include um, information. Um, so, for example, if an image needs to be attributed, we would say, um, you know, you can actually even create another heading and just say image attributions. But we usually put that under notes and put that and say images should be attributed this way and give a sample of how the image should be attributed. Um, so, for example, as you said here, um, you know, cited before, after, or at the end of a chapter. Um, if you, let's say you say uh, images are cited before, then you would include that as a, as a rule in your style sheet. Um, and again, this is very flexible. You can do with this as, as you choose and whatever works way works best uh, for you. And the reason, um, again, thinking of like the big picture, the reason that these style sheets are important and the fact that the SAI can automatically create one for you is that it will sort of remind you of the things that need to be addressed. Um, and as an editor, it's always good to have those. Uh, and yes, we can actually provide um, examples of some of our, of our basic style sheets. That is just a word file. The style sheet is actually just a word file. Um, and as I said, you can modify it to your needs as needed. It's not proprietary. This is just us. Um, we found that this format uh, works the best and keeps things in line. As you'll see when we discuss during editing, we tend to break down our editing into like chunks. So we'll edit like all our notes first before we even touch the main text because that way we're focusing specifically on that and it's easier to catch errors that way. Um, the human mind tends to work better that way rather than, hey, I'm just going to read through this document and fix things as they are. If you do that, oftentimes uh, you'll miss things. It's actually um, David will mention it, that it's been proven that if you have a sentence and there are two errors, likely you'll catch the first one and miss the second one because your brain sort of automatically just sort of says, hey, I found the error. I don't need to look at this anymore and just doesn't focus on that. Um, so yeah, so we, we broke this style sheet up in this way uh, just because of the way that we do editing, which we'll talk a little bit more once we get to that lesson. Um, add to the style sheet just by going in and typing in and saying, you know, going under A and saying, Ant, something like that, or the SAI actually gives us a pretty nifty option that allows us to, um, David is now leaving the office, um, so the, um, the option that it gives you so that, let's say we're here and we say the, work, the word fiction, if you can see me highlighting there, um, the SAI also creates this little sort of um, option um, menu when you right click uh, within a word file and you can see that one the very first one is add to style sheet and when you go ahead and click on that if the style sheet is open you'll go back over to your style sheet and undo the word F you see the word fiction that makes it very convenient for um, the editor to be able to just hey like I want to add this word but I don't want to go over to the style sheet and type it in so let me just select this right click add to style sheet. Um, and in a little bit, I'll show you um, that you can actually set that as a shortcut. Um, so that way you can, you know, it makes it even faster for the editor um, to use. And again, these are all optional as editorial is very subjective, but we find them useful and it sort of very increases our um, copy editing time. So uh, hopefully that answers the question about um, adding to the style sheet. As going back to um, the SAI. If you find that you created your style sheet and you did not click that, you know, 
populate style sheet um, check mark, you can actually do that here um, after your style sheet is created. We're not going to do that here just again um, because it'll probably go through this document and because it's not properly composed, um, it will um, it will likely take much too long for us to just sit here and watch. Um, so, uh, but once we get into the actual nitty gritty of, you know, uh, editorial and composition, we will, um, I'll show you exactly how that works. The other option in the editorial uh, section is title case. So Word has an, uh, a feature that if you go over into your home ribbon, depending on the word, on the version of Word that you have, um, there's a way that you can change the case. So you can make things sentence case, lowercase, uppercase, capitalize each word, or toggle the case so it's the inverse of what it might be. And so you might think like title case as well, that's, that's capitalizing each word. But title case actually has different rules depending on, this, on your style guide. Um, we normally here at Scribe use the Chicago Manual of Style and that's sort of our default. Uh, but depending on the style guide, certain words uh, in title case are not capitalized. Um, so it, we'll, what we've done is we've created um, this sort of routine that runs when you press this button um, that actually allows you to um, apply title case in the proper way according to your um, according to your uh, style guide. So for example, let's say this is a work of fiction, what we see here, and let's say that is actually a title, right? The word A being an article would not be capitalized according to CMS, right? If I go ahead and do capitalize each word in Word, the A is capitalized, and now I'm gonna have to go in, and actually the word of as a preposition would also need to be removed, so I would have to go in and do that manually. So just in doing, I'm just hitting Control Z on my keyboard, um, if you saw that undo. Um, if I go to the SAI, all I have to do is hit title case and you will notice that title case transformed what I had selected, but it did not capitalize the A and it didn't capitalize the O and of based on the rules in the Chicago Manual of Style. Jumping ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, just a little bit. Um, if you go to user settings, It'll bring up this dialog box and you can see editorial preferences and we actually have um, settings for APA and MLA um, as well. And you can actually create your own um, capitalization dictionary as, um, as you see fit. Uh, 